dwarf distance and place time in chains with our submarines, we have penetrated oceanic depths. Through medical science, we've been able to cure many dread plagues and diseases through the wonder drug. Our lives have been extended, and now we have greater security of physical well-being. All of this is a dazzling picture of modern man's scientific and technological progress. And yet, in spite of this, something basic is missing. The fact is that there are more slums that Negroes are living in in the United States of America today than there were 20 years ago. Yes. That's right. The fact is that the Negro is more hovered up in ghettos today, more segregated in housing today That's right. than 20 years ago. Yes. The fact is that schools, particularly in the North, are more segregated today than they were in 1954 when the Supreme yes. Court rendered its decision outlawing segregation. These are the hard facts. And we can't sit on our stools of do-nothingism <laughs> and not try to solve these problems. We've got to rise up. We've got to organize. We've got to mobilize. And we've got to work to solve these problems. We've got to stand up on our feet. Yes. We've got to develop a deep sense of self-respect and somebodyness. Yes. And no longer must we be ashamed of ourselves. Yes. We never should have been anyway. <laughs> no longer must we be ashamed of being black. No. Black is beautiful. Yes. We must know that somehow God made all of us, and one day America must understand that integration is not a problem, it is a privilege and an opportunity to participate in the beauty of diversity. Yes. Actually, I don't agree with everything that Stokely Carmichael says. I don't feel that we can win the struggle uh, through violent means. Uh, I don't believe in guerrilla warfare. I think it would be both impractical, ineffective, and immoral. Uh, so I can't uh, believe in this at all. I think we must see on the other hand, however, that the young militants are in the revolutionary spirit. And uh, they are concerned about revolutionizing uh, certain values that have been existing in our society that need to be revolutionized. And I think the other thing that we must see is that, as President Kennedy said, those who make peaceful revolution impossible only make violent revolution inevitable. The ghettos of our nation, I think the culprit must be pointed out. And the culprit in this situation is not merely the one with the Molotov cocktail, but the culprit is a Congress, is a recalcitrance of white society, the vacillation and the ambivalence of white America on the whole question of genuine equality for the black man. Well, we all lost. Uh, I can't segmentize, uh, uh, isolate the civil rights movement as something over here in America, something over there. If anything, uh, the civil rights movement is a conscience of America. And uh, if we've had a summer of violence, which we had this summer and other summers, it's a reflection on the whole nation. We wouldn't have had that violence if the nation had moved forthrightly, progressively, and honestly toward a resolution of the problem. And I still contend that our nation's summers of riots are caused by our nation's winters of delay. And as long as justice is postponed, as long as these problems are there, we are on the verge of social disruption. And it hurts not only the black man, it hurts our whole nation.
got to stand up on our feet. We've got to develop a deep sense of self-respect in somebodyness. Yes. And no longer must we be ashamed of ourselves. Yes. We never should have been anyway. <laughs> no longer must we be ashamed of being black. Yes. Black is beautiful. Yes. Yes. And we must know that somehow God made all of us, and one day America must understand that integration is not a problem, it is a privilege and an opportunity to participate in the beauty of diversity. Yes. Well, I think we all have to admit that there is a gulf and uh, a sense of its estrangement on the part of uh, the masses of Negroes, where middle-class Negroes are concerned, and I think it presents a challenge for middle-class Negroes to go all out to articulate the agonies, the ache and the pain of the masses of Negroes, and to totally identify with the struggle to solve the problem of poverty, which engulfs the life of the masses. I don't think it means that uh, the middle-class Negro can't be effective. I think it means that the middle-class Negro must identify more with the problems that are so urgent and the problems that plague the lives of all of us. Well, I can't say this is the last. I wish it was the last, but uh, I'm not able to predict what will happen. I can only say that there is a great deal of frustration and uh, bitterness and despair in the Negro community. And often this frustration leads to action that is uh, suicidal. Uh, people who are voiceless and who are neglected often end up saying unconsciously, I would uh, rather be dead than ignored. And we see this suicidal tendency in many of our riots. And the only thing that can be done now is for the nation to move on aggressively to get rid of the intolerable conditions that bring riots into being. We've got to condemn riots. But as we condemn them, we must be just as forthright in condemning the conditions that bring them into being and condemning the Congress of our nation, which can spend $80 million a day to fight a war, which I consider an unjust one in Vietnam, and yet cannot even or refuses to pass a $44 million bill to get rid of the rats in the ghettos of our nation. I think the culprit must be pointed out. And the culprit in this situation is not merely the one with the Molotov cocktail, but the culprit is a Congress, is the recalcitrance of white society, the vacillation and ambivalence of white America on the whole question of genuine equality for the black man.